Greetings and salutations to all the viewers around the world. Welcome to another episode of Sneaker Battle. I am your host, Tony Mui, and today we have a very, dare I say, mythical battle going down in one corner. He's got more J's than Jack and Jill jamming a Jada Kiss in Jiu Jitsu class. The OG Mark Bostic, aka Jumpman Bostic, is here to battle. Sir. And in the other corner, he's a southern hip hop DJ producer, and radio personality for Atlanta's V103, The People Station. DJ Greg Street is here to battle. And of course, back like a Drake love song, my guy Jose is here to provide secondary market prices to give the viewers some insight on how these sneakers either appreciated or depreciated over time. And if you're unsure of where to find the best prices, make sure to download the Soul Collector app. Let's go. Jumpman Bostic, you are strictly a Jordan collector, which is perfectly fine. What we're looking for today is the history behind the gems that you have. With that said, how do you think your Jordan collection stacks up against DJ Greg Street's collection? I don't know if I'm on that level, but we're gonna see. I'm here to battle. DJ Greg Street, when it comes to the Mount Rushmore of sneaker collections, there's four phases engraved on the side of the mountain, and then there's you at the summit. What can we expect? from your sneaker collection. Just a little heat, you know, it's, it's probably about 100 degrees in Atlanta, so, but you know, Jumpman Bostic is the homie, so we about to have a good time. Gentlemen, the rules are simple. This is a five round bout. Each round will tackle a different category. Both battlers will show off their shoes at the same time from the count of three. And with that said, let us begin. Round one, show off your most historical sneaker in three, two, one show. Okay. This is the 1985 OG Chicago One. Still has the Nike Air branding on the end. So this is the dinosaur of all sneakers. Still wear. I wear this shoe every year on the first day of every year. These are the same ones that I wear. I have two pairs that I wear. But hold on, jump man. DS in the OG box. Oof. With the wristband. Dang. With the tank top. <laughs> Watch out now. With the original receipt. Wow. Dang. 31,000, 34 cents. DS brand new. Greg Tree, you said you bought them for $31? $31. Oh my. God. It was on sale. They're the original box price. Holy cow, $34.99. The brother, <laughs> the black and red. Okay, also not 19... 1985. Okay. Also from 1985. Ooh. DS Waffles. With the Nike Waffle Bottoms. That's crazy. I want Jose to see if he's ever seen, ever, ever oh, seen anybody else with this shoe. This is the 2010 that was specifically made for MJ. This was MJ's personal pair. This is the Air Jordan 2010, supposedly a one of one. I've never seen anybody else with this specific color. So both you guys pulled out relics and you're making my job easy because it's the same pair. This pair is up in price, a lot more than $34, I'll say that. It's looking like it's 25,000 on average for a resale. This is the shoe that started everything. This is the one. Round two, show us your most challenging sneaker pickup. The most difficult sneaker for you to get in three, Two, one, show. Oh, Greg Street is so mysterious with just a box. Oh my goodness. Okay, are those the M&M 4s? Greg, here you go, buddy. You are a lucky you guy. Know, Keep it sound. quiet. Paul D. <laughs> Rosenberg. I hit him up and asked him, I, I think I got one pair left in your size. It was just that easy. Paul's a great guy, he's a good guy. Ray Allen 13. That was super challenging for me. I, I wasn't able to come across this shoe until Ray left and went to join Miami. And uh, the person that had this shoe hated him for that. And he knew that I was a Ray Allen fan and I was able to, you know, get this from him. This is, it's, it's recent, but it was super stressful and challenging because I was invited to All-Star Weekend and, you know, I was first in line at a lot of the events. Couldn't get anything. Everything was sold out. And when I was flying back home on Sunday, I got the call, hey, I got you. All you gotta do is 
Cash asked me the money, and a couple days later, here they were. The auction. Oh, okay. So I was able to get the three I wanted. I could have gotten the off-white fives, but I think that's not my style. The denim jump. Reese Forbes denim. These are really crazy. They, they, they've always been hard to get. All right, Bostic, I'll start with you on that one. That Ray Allen 13 is near and dear to my heart. I love that sneaker. That sneaker is going for around 5,000 on the low, 10,000 on the high. Not much to say about that blue M&M 4. There's not many pairs of those out there, and especially to get a note from Paul himself to have that is a massive relic. That's a $30,000 sneaker. Round three, show off your best unicorn sneaker. A sneaker that most people probably don't know about. In three, two, one, show. A long time ago, this sneaker was on the cover of Sneaker Freak. Nobody knew what it was. And I went and found it. It's a, it's a design company in Switzerland called Plus 41. Very slept on. And they, they kind of pricey if you find a pair. This is common. Everybody knows it's a Jordan team. Right. But when you see that 32 on there, Ooh. I've, I've heard people say Will Purdue. I've heard people say Will Hamilton. But it was somebody that was given the name that's supposed to be the next protege of Jordan. Came out of the West Coast College. Played in Miami. Won the dunk contest. Any other hints? I'll give you his initial, HM. Harold Miner. Yes, sir. Okay, wow. So that's Harold Miner's Jordan 10? Yes. A hell, hell of a dunker, and everybody thought that he was going to be the next MJ, and they made nicknamed him Baby Jordan. Cole Hahn and Jordan collab on a boot. A couple different colorways. This is Croc skin, though. Shots to Supreme, the Army Supreme. But people don't know that the Wu-Chang store was actually in Atlanta. It was on Peachtree Street in like, what, 96, 97, 98? Oh, okay. A little Coraline dunk action. Coraline dunk. Oh, wow, you got the whole thing. Oh, some Kansas. It's called an FBI. An FBI Jordan? Jordan team FBI. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing it over to Jose. Jose, talk to us. Greg Street, I'll start with you. That Air Max One Plus 41 is very hard to find. I'm not seeing any pairs for sale online. Nonetheless, this is a priceless sneaker. Bostic. Your sneaker is another one that's hard to track down. PEs are not easy to come across. We all know that. Not seeing any for sale on here. Again, that's another priceless sneaker in my opinion. Round four, show off your best PE sneaker. I know Jumpman Bostic just showed off the Harold Miners. I hope you have another one. In three, two, one, show! Greg Street, you're so secretive with the boxes. Why don't you start it off? Hold on, hold on, we need to rotate that, rotate that. MVP Mamba, Jordan 1 mid, is it? It's a big Nike, Kobe MVP. I think it was the first MVP. It was a big Nike they made, they, they, they were real, very, very limited. Like, you, you couldn't just find them. And there was a big thing, a, a young lady by the name of Sandra Rose had a website in Atlanta, and she knew I was in the sneakers, and she made a, she had a challenge on her website. When the shoe came out, she posted it and said, I bet Greg Street can't get these. I went and got two pair. The Pope the Donald producers like one of the biggest Kobe fans in the, on planet Earth. And I got I got two pair, one for me and one for him. This is the, the Ray Allen 8. The home, back from that magical season. Hmm. Size 14. And I remember first time I held this, held this shoe, not this particular shoe, Perfect Pair had And he, I remember I went to an event in Oklahoma City and he brought his entire Ray Allen collection for me to look at. And I said, I I'm gonna have this shoe one day and like four, about four years later, five years later, I ended up getting it. Jay-Z and he LeBron go. James. Oh my God. Here you go. All black everything. All black everything. You had Jay-Z throwing up the rock side on the tongue. You had LeBron James throwing up the rock. Mm. Bravo. There's some rare air here. Ooh. I know a lot of people don't like the 15s, but this is the Ray Allen Bucks Ooh, 15. Yes. I haven't seen too many people with these, period. This is the TS2 Terra Squad, Fred Jones, 
when he was with the New York Knicks. Oh, that yes. was his number. He was, you know, with with Fat Joe and all them. Fat Joe seen these and was like, no way. But the only thing that's different on his is the midsole was a different color. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. We've never seen those before, though. Hold on. This one is just the Jasper Low and. Now, I know Yachty showed his, right? Yes. Oh. He gonna be mad when he see this. <laughs> you don't look the bottom, that's like licking the ass. You lick the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> is that the new bottle now? We lick the tongues? <laughs> <laughs> lick the tongue. You lick the bottom, that's like licking the ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's the dunk championship shoe by Fred Jones. This is the new retro. Air Jordan too. They didn't know what they wanted to do, so they put the shroud on it. They was Jordan Brand was just coming up with stuff at this point. Bostic, I'll start with you. Those Sugar Ray Eights. That is a ten thousand dollars sneaker, and definitely worth the trade for those UNC Off White Ones. Those MVP Big Nike Kobe's. Hard to find. Very close to being on the priceless edge because there's not many pairs for sale out there. The last pair I found that was for sale was around $2,200, but doesn't say the date when. We all know Kobe's are going up, so I'm guessing that sneaker is worth a lot more than what that price. All right, gentlemen, let's move on to the final round, round five. This round is called Battler's Choice. Whatever heat you want to use against your opponent, now is the time to do so. In three, two, one, show. Eddie Jones. Street showed off some signatures. There's Eddie Jones, name on the tongue. 13 from the Miami Heat. Colette Paris. Oh my goodness. I don't think we've ever seen those. Is there an official Colette name for that? It's called Heat. <laughs> All right, that's what we're going to put in the lower thirds. We're just going to put it. It might be Jay Khaled's voice. These are what we call Heat, young man. Heat. <sighs> okay, Greg. Take it down. I see a little Paris action, a little pigeon action. Bostic got that trophy room action. I guess I'll just call out the shoes now so you guys can just peek, keep picking them up. Both of them. Mm -hmm. Family and the DI. Oh, wow, Greg Street just, how many pigeons do you actually have? I have to sweep up uh, droppings every day. <laughs> People wish it would retro. Mm. DJ Greg Street, do you know any French? I'm, I'm signing in French. <laughs> Montana. Okay, I see some Oregon threes. You know what these are? Oh, Rip Hamilton twelves. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Well, we get the nine. Okay. I like the ones that release. I know people are saying that, but you can look at the lace eyelets and see that they're not the same as the GI and okay. that leather pull tab in the back. Q Rich twos? Was that yes? Q Rich twos, right? Are those the Bapes? Bape Adidas? No, one of 100. Wow. Wow. Did they did they come as a pack? I got the rest of them. You got the tan, the camo, the black. The black, the black and the snake skin were the most limited. Okay. You got the 20 spread. This is crazy. What is that? The 20s. Is that the Seattle? The Seattle 20s? Greg Street with the Amsterdam's, okay. Some Air Max ones, okay. Friends and family, is that? They, they were, they saw, they were, they were on quick strike release. Okay. Mm. This is my last one. Okay. That never released. It's a sample of the 22. This is what the 22 looked like when they released. <laughs> this is a sample. And this was metal. And you know what? what that Trinidad did to people's Achilles. Remember that back in the day? Oh, no. When, with the, the Jordan Trinidad that was uh, slicing people's Achilles and they recalled him. Mm. Ah. He out of control. Ah. He out of control. <laughs> Reebok, Kanye. All right, gentlemen, I, I have to at least cap this off somehow. Clearly, there are no prices for this, no secondary market prices for this, so. I'll say it for Jose, these are priceless sneakers. You can't put a price on any of these. Both these guys have the museum. These are the Guggenheim. This is the, this is, this is it. This the is moments. everything. Lives. 
And that concludes another episode of Sneaker Battle. Thank you to Jumpman Bostic. Thank you to DJ Greg Street. I'm gonna swing it over to Jumpman Bostic. What do you have going on? Videos, I have some other things that's going on. Uh, I can't really speak on right now. So hopefully it's, it's some things like you mentioned earlier that, that are starting to happen. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. I've made some connections with people and just trying to stay busy in the sneaker game and hope to have a museum one day where I can have Greg bring down some of his stuff to put on display in there as well. Follow DJ Greg Street on all social media platforms. Those are the Air Max 180s. Uh, oh, is that the Dizzy Rascal? Very nice. Make sure you tune into Atlanta's, what is it? V103, the People Station. Yes. And uh, yeah, uh, make sure you leave in the, in the comments below who won this battle. And we'll see you on the next episode. Shout out to the Shady Vans. Peace, we out of here.